Question. How does an artist decide what to paint next? Answer. I don't know. But, to give you an idea of an answer, they need to look inside themselves and think what life experiences they had. Painful ones, joyful ones, exciting ones and then possibly make a painting based on that experience. Therefore, I did a painting of a cat again. Hello and welcome. My name is Charles Bose. I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. And today I'm going to explain why I chose to do a painting of a cat. Plus, the challenges that I'm going through doing it. I recently got done finishing a homeless dog painting and that was based on my experience in Greece where I kept seeing a bunch of dogs that looked like they were abandoned so I made a painting based on this one dog that looked like it was truly suffering where it was just laying on a sidewalk between two streets in the blazing sun and the painting was not really a joyful one and doing that painting in a way was kind of emotional so I decided to move on to something more light-hearted, which is cats. Just like when I was in Greece, I first did a painting of Charlie the dog, and then I followed it up with Rula the cat. In the same way, when I came back, in similar fashion, I did my take on homeless dogs first, and now I'm doing my take on homeless cats. Between cats and dogs, it seems that the felines fare better when it comes to them that having homes. They seem more organized, they seem to find food a lot easier, and in a way avoid danger very well. I took many photos of cats throughout the Grevenov region, mostly in my village. And most of the cats, <laughs> they would not let me get within 10 feet of them. There was even this one cat while I was hiking in the fields one day, from a far, far distance, he saw me. And the moment he noticed I saw him, he got up and ran away. He didn't even let me get within a hundred feet of him. And in some ways, there were other ones, and very few, that were more playful. I got to interact with a few of them. And even though I couldn't find the cat from one of my paintings in the past, just a shadow, I feel like I found its descendant and his descendant was actually very friendly. But for the most part, the cats, they always would be very alert and cautious. And I kind of like that look this cat was giving me. During some of the first few days while I was in Greece, I was walking around my village and looking around areas that looked interesting for photography. And I came across this one cat. The way he was staring at me behind the bars it caught my interest. He had this look in his face where he felt safe and secure and there was a, definitely a barrier. So I took photos of him and honestly the way he kept looking at me it was with these eyes of curiosity but always alert. And it's something I'm trying to capture in the painting. Like with the past paintings I've done recently I'm using a photo that I'm projecting through a monitor. And that gives me some advantages to be able to zoom in when I really need to get some detail going. Besides the look of the cat's eyes, the other focus is capturing the three-dimensionality of the painting. And what I mean by that are the bars and the tiles and some of the brickwork. And one of the highlights of the painting will end up being this plant here where I want the leaves to stand out. The painting is very simple but there's a lot of straight lines and the most interesting thing about them is they are not all straight. And in a way it's part of the struggle that I'm going through right now such as how these two tiles they're not the same thickness but I'm painting them that way because that's how I see them. And in ways, the cat, it's not going to be the main focus. The eyes will, but the body, since it's behind the bars, is going to definitely recede a little. As for capturing some of the detail, 
Some of the things that caught my eye that I am going to include in the painting are some of these right here. And they are chips of paint and rust that is exposed. And besides the rusty parts, there's areas that are also beginning to bubble and eventually they will chip away too. This detail is not that hard to capture, but it will involve paying attention closely to areas where there's light and dark. And going back to making the painting 3D, edges are very important to do that. Knowing the placement of order helps. For example, this ledge right here is going to be more sharper and eventually I'm going to probably blur a little more of the cat. And areas like these corners here on the bars where dark meets light there should be a nice highlight to make it stand out even more. Last but not least, all the imperfections that you see here. I'm going to try to capture them to the best of my ability. Not 100% accurate, but give the impression of them. And lastly, the plant here. I'm considering making it bigger because as of right now, doesn't take up too much of the painting but I do want to do a better job of light and dark contrast so these leaves pop out better in the end I do want the viewer to get this sense that the cat is behind the bars and feels secure but at the same time it is looking carefully at you with eyes that are very alert Normally I do a bunch of time-lapse videos and usually it's several episodes but this time around I'm going to try to do only one time-lapse video from beginning to end instead of split them up into different episodes in hopes that I don't bore you guys. But rest assured I am currently working on this painting and soon I feel like I will be finished. So stay tuned. Also check out my Instagram, not your typical painter of course, or not your typical photos if you want to see more of my work. Anyway, I'm going to keep this video short and sweet. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Charles Limbos. I go by Bob. I am not your typical painter. Stay tuned for more. Bye.